Okay. In the interest of Therese being interested in housing partnership, let's quickly go around and introduce ourselves. I'm Carmen Juno. I'm the chair of the committee. I've been on this committee for four years. I, um, I'm a homeowner in Florence, and I'm also a retired social worker, and I used to work at the VA with homeless veterans. Gordon? Hi, Teresa. I'm Gordon. I'm the uh, um, vice chair, and I've been on partnership for over a decade, probably 12 years at this point. Um, and I, uh, my day job is I'm an attorney at Legal Aid um, in Western Mass. Richard? Uh, my name is Richard Abusa. I'm a Florence resident. I'm a local property manager, and I've been on the partnership for a long time. Bev? Hi, my name is Bev Bates. Um, I have been on the partnership for a relatively short time. Uh, Carmen could probably tell me how long, but probably about a year. Um, I, too, am from Florence. Um, not from there, but I currently reside uh, in Florence. and. Um, I am recently, relatively recently retired, um, worked in affordable housing uh, for most of my, all of my career. Nice to meet you. Thanks, Beth. Hannah? Uh, my name is Hannah Schaefer. I am a renter in Florence and I've been on the partnership for uh, about two years. And Keith? It's the Florence crew. Yeah. I'm in Florence. <laughs> Hi, Therese. Oh. Uh, Keith Benoit, uh, as you know, I'm the Community Development Planner of the City, and I'm also the ADA Coordinator, and I've been staffing now for three years as of March 17th. And Edgar, we're introducing ourselves because Therese is here kind of uh, for the second time, but listening and, and being interested in affordable housing. So you're the last. Edgar, go ahead. Hi, Therese. I'm Edgar Cancel. I'm a resident in Florence, a former public housing resident and a current um, a board member of the Housing Authority as well. I've been on the partnership for about uh, four years. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so you are welcome, Therese, to join in any conversation that we have, and, and we welcome your comments, just want to say. Let's go to the minutes of March 6th, last month. Does anybody want to make a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve. Second? I'll second it. OK, let's take a voice vote. Gordon? Yes. Deb? Yes. Richard? Yes. Edgar? Yes. Hannah? Yes. Me? Yes. Minutes of um, Just quickly to inform you that Gwen has resigned from this um, partnership committee. Um, not exactly sure the reason, but she says she has other other things in mind. So she's out and uh, Ace um, can't can't be here tonight. She sent me an email and I know Bev, you have to leave at six o'clock, right? Um, I, I just wanna say, Carmen, I'll stick around as long as you need a quorum if I'm the, but yes, I have something else I have to do. And quite frankly, thought I'd sneak a little dinner in beforehand. <laughs> All right, very good. The minutes have been approved. So let's go to, we're already on agenda item, item four, update on CHAPA Municipal Engagement Light Program. So Keith is gonna chime in too, but as you probably recall, CHAPA is um, a statewide uh, organization. It stands for Citizens Housing and Planning Initiative. One of its purposes is to uh, be a support and coach municipal organizations and committees like ours in how to um, do and elevate the conversation of, around housing issues and affordable housing. Um, Keith applied for and we got a accepted into um, municipal engagement light. Keith and I and a number of other people who are not on this committee, but are from a variety of other um, sort of stakeholders within the city 
um, form the steering committee. We had a Zoom meeting with the Chapel Light engagement folks, Dana Winter and Monica, I think her last name is Green. Um, one thing that was clarified for us is, I think you all remember, may remember that we were gonna do this Chapel Light engagement around Crafts Avenue, which is behind the Unitarian Society and the and City Hall. That's going to be turned into 16 um, affordable um, one bedroom or studio apartments for currently homeless. But actually, initially, we're going to have a community meeting around issues of affordable housing. Um, rather than focus on Crafts Avenue, we're going to first open the conversation up. And that community meeting is gonna take place on June 13th, which is a Tuesday. I think it's from six to 7.30 in the city hall, um, uh, the city hall, you know, the meeting room where the city council takes place. They have a hybrid, they have a very well working hybrid option there. So it'll be both in person and through Zoom. We're um, encouraging all kinds of, uh, we're kind of gathering a list of all kinds of stakeholders um, that we're, we will be sending an official invitation to. The meeting will be chaired and will be, as far as I understand, um, will be conducted by um, Dana, Dana LeWinter and Monica Green from CHAPA. The rest of the steering committee, um, which includes Amy Kayleen, the Chamber of Commerce Director, Alex Jarrett, me, Keith, a few other people who I can't remember because I don't know them. Um, so the rest of the steering committee will be there. Um, it will be very well structured by the CHAPA people and it will give us a, as I see it, sort of a takeoff point from which to really elevate our own conversation about affordable housing, which I feel for me personally has sort of gone stale. Um, and from there, there will be other specific um, uh, a kind of conversations and meetings around Crafts Avenue and then expanding from there. Keith, do you want to say anything at this point? No, I think that's a good summary. Um, you know, um, I think it's a broad conversation about affordable housing and, you know, there are several um, projects in the pipeline for, you know, Valley and, um, um, you know, uh, like Pioneer Valley Habitat for Humanity, things like that. So I think it, it I think it will be helpful um, because kind of instead of focusing on the details about maybe one particular project, having a bigger scope will, um, you know, we, what we want to do is kind of help change the conversation or start the conversation. Um, but it was a good meeting, and um, I think I have a better understanding of kind of what what's in what's going to be uh, taking place. I think it's really an invitation for all kinds of community stakeholders. One, so some of the people I noticed on the stakeholder list are, you know, big um, development um, people like Kiter and Construct and those people. And I, you know, I would very much like to hear from more people who aren't necessarily kind of sort of in the basket of affordable housing, but see what everybody thinks, what their concerns are, what their thoughts are, what their hopes are. And I think this conversation will be really, um, uh, will really te teach us a lot about where the community is. Um, I know there's been pushback around affordable housing that, you know, sometimes I've heard and I see in some of the CHAPA and, and municipal engagement light um, information that, I, that I've been reading, you know, people will say, well, why don't you just go somewhere where you can afford to live then? I mean, what is the big deal? And I know that I, I've had sort of trouble kind of, you know, crystallizing my own response to that. So I think that municipal engagement light, light has a lot to teach us. And I think that um, this will be actually probably a very fascinating meeting. You all, of course, will be invited. Any thoughts or questions? Bev? 
Yeah. Um, are they um, going to give at least you, if not um, other people, um, some sense of the range of topics that are going to be invited? Or is it kind of a, you know, anybody who wants to say anything about affordable housing stands up and says it kind of thing? What I saw, um, and I still have to delve deeper into this, is that we, the steering committee, that is we, are going to create our own invitation to the list of stakeholders that we're gathering. And that will include um, essentially uh, a whole variety of topics, including, um, I think, basically an agenda. You know, I didn't delve into that too much, but yes, it, it depends on each um, individual community where they want to take the conversation, but it's not just going to be come and talk about affordable housing. It's going to be much more structured than that. And the two people from um, CHAPA um, are going to be leading that. And they've done a lot of this. So it will be out front what the structure is, and then it will be led by people who I see as experts in this kind of discussion. Yeah. Other thoughts? I don't know, did you give a timeline for when this is all going to happen? Um, well, June 13th, all, Tuesday, June 13th okay. at uh, yeah. 6 p.m. at City Council Chambers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That will be the kickoff conversation with CHAPA people leading that. And is it just focused on Northampton or is it broad? Is it the broader community region? Is it just us? I think that that is yeah. up to the steering committee to kind of craft that agenda around that. But mm -hmm. I think there, I mean, we have to include a broader, a broader conversation, a broader area than just us, right? So we'll see. I mean, this is brand new to me. It should, should yield a lot of interesting thoughts. Richard, did you have something? No? Okay. Anyway, stay tuned. All right. Um, update on Municipal Affordable Housing Trust Fund, M-A-H-T-F. That's Hannah or Edgar? Uh, yeah, so I am supposed to give the update. Um, I was hoping that I could sort of hijack this section to talk about something that is um, related. Uh, sure. And okay, I hope you'll bear with me for a minute. I have like terrible public speaking anxiety even just in these meetings. So mm -hmm. um, so uh, this month, one of the reasons that I had trouble uh, doing some of the research that I had wanted to do for this presentation was because my apartment was uh, without water for a number of days. We had a sewage backup, like waste flowed in through my tub, through the non-working toilets. We were without running water. And I'm sorry if I get like a little bit emotional. Um, it's very frustrating. Uh, and when I had asked my landlord, like, what are we supposed to do without running water? Do we know when this will be resolved? Um, he gave me a bucket, which I will show you. Um, this bucket has not been used by the way, but he gave me this bucket, which has a, a toilet seat cover on it. And this was the bucket that we were supposed to use to go to the bathroom in. Um, and he gave us all three gallons of water. So I went to stay with my parents. I'm lucky that I could. This is a sanitary bucket, it has not been used. Um, so, you know, this this prevented me doing some of the work that I wanted to do this month on researching the Municipal Affordable Housing Trust Fund. And it just, it got me thinking about sort of the current state of the housing partnership, the fact that we've lost a lot of members recently. Um, you know, this is, this situation that I'm in, it, I, I'm afraid that, you know, to sort of follow up and try to take action on this situation with in my apartment, which was resolved. Um, I'm a month to month renter, you know, that it could lead to some sort of retaliation that would lead to me 
not being able to rent this apartment anymore. Um, my landlord reminds me all the time that, you know, I'm getting such a good deal. And at any time we could all be out and he could raise the rent and um, to double what I'm paying now. Uh, so I just, I, and thank you so much for letting me like hijack this. I just, I wanted to take this moment to like, maybe see if next month or something, we could just talk about like, if there's anything more that we could be doing or any more time that we could be dedicating to something like the broker uh, fee home rule petition, which I don't know if there's more that we can do, but I know like that will be something that will be crucial for me to be able to stay in Northampton and rent in Northampton. Um, if I get kicked out of my apartment, I'm likely going to need to go through Rent Now Ho, and it's just like a huge barrier for me. Uh, so yeah, just, just thinking in general about like the like general morale of the partnership and energy that we have right now and seeing like how people feel and where their time commitment is. I mean, we have one 90 minute meeting a month and I just, just feel like that's not enough. Uh, I mean, I know it's hard to find that time, but it feels like it's not enough for pushing something this big through or pushing something like getting the affordable housing trust fund up through. And I don't know where that time comes from, but uh Thanks for letting me ramble. I really appreciate it. Hannah, thank you so much for bringing these various important issues up in this meeting. Thanks. And I wonder if anybody has a comment. Therese? Comment. Just as a member of the public and a, a landlord, um, you don't pay rent for these when your unit does not reach meet sanitary code, of course, right? So, I mean, you take that, you, you keep that. And then retaliation, of course, is also for six months, it's not forever, um, illegal and frowned upon by, you know, the, the state. Um, so you do have rights as a tenant. I mean, and of course, those things you can find at mass.gov. That's just, the, I'm sorry, just, that's an aside, but you've probably heard that before, but. Um, Hannah, you know, I mean, I work in legal so you know this is my world i hear this this stuff all the time and evictions and people complain about conditions and they're afraid of being retaliated against just know there are defenses and things that you can raise um including the presumption which therese mentioned which is um only a it's a, uh the uh, uh the protection is a presumption in the law that the landlord's actions are retaliatory not necessarily they can't be overcome but that's a there's a sort of burden shifting thing <clears throat> Get a notice to quit. Email me. I'll, I'll walk. I'll talk you through it. <laughs> Are there Bev? Um, I just want to thank you, Anna, for sharing that. I know you felt like you were, as you put it, hijacking the agenda. But this kind of, for me, is the agenda. And um, you know, I, as the one who said I had to leave early, I didn't want to drag the conversation on. But since I've been on the housing partnership, I haven't known what our agenda is, what our priorities are. I mean, I have a good sense of some of the things we've talked about, obviously, that therefore are priorities, but um, it's confusing without clarity. And that lack of clarity starts in my mind way before the partnership. It's what does Northampton want to do in the space about housing? As you pointed out, that's big space. That's, you know, dealing with bad landlords. It's, if yours is, I'm not making judgment. It's dealing with code enforcement. It's dealing with making money available for renovation of existing properties. But for me, it's also about creating new housing because as long as the supply and demand curve is as bad as it is in a place like this, folks are gonna be afraid. They're gonna be afraid. If I wanna have both have a, a, a place in Northampton, um, and a voice, uh, I have to have some options for where I'm going to live here. And that is part of the um, conversation that I'm particularly interested in. And so, you know, one of the things I wonder about this CHAPA thing is, do you think it will be able to create the right forum for at least some kind of um, Northampton agenda around housing, whether we all agree with what the agenda is, 
at least the people understand what it is and we understand whether or not we're being successful because we have some metrics. We want to create 100 units a year, whatever the number is. We want to reduce evictions. We want, you know, whatever they are. Um, it's the absence of that that has made it hard for me to figure out who's being successful at what. Mm -hmm. End of speech. And again, Hannah, uh, having worked in and around this space, uh, you should feel very, um, I would say, safe going to get the kind of help that's being offered here. So you don't mm -hmm. have to pee in a pot. Oh, one more thing. I'm help. Ha I did say this to you, and I and I'm happy to help on the affordable housing trust. Let's just you know connect in whatever way public meeting allows uh, to talk about what that might mean, what I could do. That's really the end, Carmen. Okay, could you just wait one more moment because I have one, one one thing to say. Okay, so Hannah, you have just in that. One thing that you told us about, you have enlivened this conversation so much because you touched on a number of things. First of all, the rental situation and Bev, you know, amplifying that whole housing situation. Secondly, um, will the CHAPA conversation, you know, enlarge what we're doing and give us a platform with more stakeholders than just our little committee around what that jumping off point could be? more just not just us five six seven eight seven eight nine and um thirdly i want to say that one of the things i was thinking about for today's meeting was i really want to go back maybe not discuss today but next time meeting in person at least sometimes because i feel like doing this on zoom makes everything more distant the um council meetings are now hybrid um I think that even if we didn't decide anything other than we're gonna do one in-person meeting and see how that goes, that that would be super helpful because I have struggled with these issues that both of you are bringing up too. You know, How can we make this really relevant to people right now and not distant? And what is our unity with the city around what that, what that what that overall picture looks like. And so anyway, thank you so much. Thank Any you. Any other thoughts though, Keith? Yeah, uh, thank you, um, Hannah, for bringing that up. And, um, you know, as a planner, uh, I plan things. Uh, and that's to say that, you know, we take our data that we have and, you know, we put some goals out there and we try to take some action. And, you know, I'm always trying to, point us towards, you know, what is the mission of the housing partnership in the in the municipal, um, sorry, in the um, language of the ordinance, uh, but also kind of the direction from the fair housing assessment in 2019. There's some stuff in there, some action items that we've uh, started to address. Um, and then we don't have a, um, a housing production plan. The last one we did in 2010, which uh, is very old, um, but we do have like the sustainable Northampton plan, uh, which is kind of an addendum to the comprehensive plan. Um, so those are, you know, three kind of starting points. Um, and we can also, you, you know, have a conversation about what, what we want to glom on to. Um, but um, I would, if we're struggling to figure out what we need to take, I would suggest kind of going back to that and um, seeing what are those action items we can do. That's it. And I believe, um, just to interrupt for a moment, that CHAPA, because I saw their PowerPoint presentation in their initial conversation with Winchester Mass, that they are going to, I believe, do a presentation around all of these different issues in Northampton. You know, what percent are renters? What percent... Um, this, that, and the other thing. I mean, more than I can say now, but I think that they will provide a good platform um, to spring off to for for a conversation to spring off with various community stakeholders on that evening. So, Hannah, I take it that you guys didn't didn't couldn't that that you really couldn't focus on the municipal affordable housing trust because of some of these 
immediate issues that you're bringing to our attention. Ed, Edgar? Uh, yeah, we actually um, forgot to uh, email Keith about the uh, about our meeting for yesterday. So we didn't end up meeting. Yeah. But we will, you know, so um, this this time around, uh, um, uh, let, you know, send the information to Keith ahead of time so we could have, uh, so it could be posted and all that. Um, but we decided not to meet um, because we hadn't we hadn't done that, and so we didn't want to violate any uh, OML laws. But okay. um, we will meet, and we'll, um, we we um, have done a little bit of uh, work. Actually, going ahead, um, uh, share some stuff even after uh, resigning from uh, from this body. So um, that was super mm -hmm. helpful. So we'll be able to have um, uh, some good information on uh, for next meeting for sure if we can. Uh, Put that back on the agenda for next month as well okay um Great. and also uh hannah thank you so much for um uh, for sharing um and for your courage and and talking about this stuff um i um i just um i feel you um i um i uh the uh un, um unfortunate uh situation to have you know um not as good landlords as I have now. I have um, a, a, a great landlord now, thankfully, and um, it, it makes a world of a difference. Um, and um, I think also uh, there are people that are um, uh, that um, uh, just um, may not even know uh, any better. <laughs> um, not to uh, make any excuses, but um, I think. Um, I think uh, we could really help out a lot uh, with uh, stuff like this. Um, um, the more we we can uh, educate ourselves. So I'm, I'm going all over the place here, but definitely Chapa. I think it's a great use of our time. So I appreciate y'all who have been um, uh, putting time and effort into that. Um, and you said it was June thirteenth at six p.m. The uh, Tuesday, June thirteenth, from six to seven thirty, and. We'll put you all on the invite list, of course, and invitations Great. going out at a later date. Yeah, okay. you're, you're all stakeholders. Okay, great, thank you. That's it for me. Beth? Carmen, are, are you uh, needing any more votes tonight? And do you have the... No, I don't think that we have any business that we need to vote on. So I think that that means we can continue discussion without a vote. So well, I hate you. to miss I hate to meet, miss the next chapter of this discussion because it's been it's been great and uh, I do yeah. have to excuse myself. See you later, everybody. Bye, bye, Beth. Bye. And I just want to welcome Migdalia, Migdalia Camacho. You were here last month. You're here again. Feel yeah. free. Feel free to um, enter into any conversation we have. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's good. All right. Any other thoughts uh, about that or anything about the previous discussion before we move on? You know, I, 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 get, I, I totally understand some of the frustration and probably it, 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 it feeds into why we, we, we don't retain members very long. I mean, I will say, and Richard's been on longer than I have, it, it let, lack the historical perspective, but there's been a lot that we've done through the years. Um, and we're at a point now where we've got a lot of a lot of things up balls in the air, but it's been really, really challenging to move any of these things forward. And so it's just an inopportune time for people just coming in. It feels like things are sort of just stalemate. Um, mm -hmm. But um, I, and, and you know, I've seen a lot of people come and go, and, and you know, the partnership is really what we make of it. And if, if people come with the energy and the vision to want to do something, it's possible to make it happen. But if you're here just to be an observer, it's usually you don't last. I mean, you, if you're waiting for things to happen, it's not going to happen unless you make it happen. Mm -hmm. I also yeah. think that, you mm -hmm. know, I mean, I joined the committee in 2019 and one year later we had COVID and we've been on Zoom since. And because of the national housing crisis and um, the other factors around housing, I think that, um, yeah, I, I feel, well, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I will end my comments there. Does somebody else have a comment? Edgar? 
Yeah, I just want to echo uh, Gordon's um, uh, thoughts of, uh, around um, uh, our work here. Um, I definitely have been um, a witness of uh, us kind of focusing on on one project um, and just you know um, the the beauty that has been created. Um, and for me, you know, two actually two of those projects that were very special was uh, the um, the report. Uh, that we did and um, and the um, amazing support that we gave towards uh, building the playground project at Hampshire Heights. So that was like um, just two examples for me of like stuff that that I just kind of dedicated time and energy into and the partnership really, uh, really backed it up. And so I'm actually looking forward to such projects. So thank you, Gordon, for saying that. Those, those were two very concrete projects that had a goal and met their goal and people can see. And so, um, yeah, those are good things. All right, well, let's, you know, I also feel like Zoom contributes to, here's the agenda, kind of an intellectual discussion. Let's move on without this kind of dynamic back and forth. And I really miss that. and. So again, Hannah, thank you very much. Thanks everybody for participating. All right, so agenda item number six, announcement on officers and members. So, all right, I already said that Gwen resigned. Um, Ace can't be here tonight. Um, neither, I believe that neither Gordon or I really want to continue in our officer position, chair and co-chair past August. And we're simply bringing this up to you to have you think about whether any of you would like to take on those roles. You don't need to say that here. You could send an email. You could ignore this entirely. It's just it's totally up to you. But that's, that's on our minds. And I just want it to be on your mind just to think about, um, you know, the, tra the trajectory of the committee. Comments? Well, given that uh, Ace and, and, and Bev just left, um, we should yeah. make sure we put this back on the agenda for next month and give totally. just, we're just starting the conversation now because it is, there has to be, um, uh, all the years I've been on the committee, the, the, it's usually been, what's the word I'm looking for? By acclamation that the officers get elected, it's not really, a bit, like who wants to do it really? So, and yeah. I've done it, I've had two tours, two separate tours of being the chair and now the vice chair, I think for two years running now. But, um, and it, it, you know, it, it allows you to um, help to set the agenda. And what we do in advance of this meeting is we meet with Keith and we sort of plot through what the agenda should be, and then that comes when Keith sends it out. But largely, it's a role of facilitation, and more than anything, it's facilitation. Um, right. And I remember when I, I was, I became chair like one year after I joined. I kind of felt like I drew the short straw at that time because everyone just pointed to me, and I said, "Okay, what the heck, I'll do it." <laughs> but that was going back like ten years ago. <laughs> right. I became chair, I think, two years after I joined. Yeah. And it was all by Zoom. So that was, you know, it's been, that was initially extremely challenging. But yes, let's put it on the agenda again, and we will greet it next month. Okay, so we're actually at the end of our agenda, other business not anticipated. Does anybody have anything? Or want to say anything about other parts of tonight's discussion, Keith? I'll, I'll just mention that oh. the, the statute, ch chapter 257, maybe you've, you've heard about it in the news because it's it's a big deal in terms of the housing and rental world. The They did not pass an extension of that, of that act. So it removed a very important protection. There's still an attempt to get it in the um, supplemental budget or the supple some supplemental amendments. Um, but it's it's if you hear about it and you have the ability to lobby your your state legislators, it's really important. This would provide protections for tenants who have who are currently seeking out rental assistance through the RAFT program. And what it does is it puts an automatic stay on the eviction. Now it's only in the discretion of it. Without the statute, it's it's now discretionary. <clears throat> Keith. 
Yeah. Um, so I think maybe before the next meeting, I can kind of I kind of have a list of all the action items from the fair housing assessment, and I can go in and kind of give an update on each one and just send it out. So we can kind of see like the things that have been identified from the plan and what we've been working on and possible next steps. And then two of the action items on there, one was um, increasing the amount of money or um, for lead paint abatement or applying for the HUD lead hazards grant. Um, and I, I did a deep dive into what applying for that would look like. And I, I talked to um, the Childhood Lead uh, Paint Protection Program, CLPP from Massachusetts. Um, and um, basically, so the other awardees um, in Massachusetts are cities like Worcester, Springfield, Lawrence, Lynn, um, like big, Big, bigger cities with a lot of lead paint, um, and they they get the award to do things within the city. Um, but because Northampton is so small, the um, uh, I was told that it really our grant would have to be um, countywide. The minimum grant amount is a million dollars. That's the floor, and I calculated some administrative stuff. And what that would look like, um, and it would be a tremendous burden um, administratively uh, because if we applied, we'd be doing it for all however many cities in Hampshire County. Um, so at least for right now, I'm not going to pursue that. Um, but the other the other item is the small area. FMR and I have, I'm gonna have a conversation next week um, uh, in the city about what the next steps would be to investigate um, maybe getting a study together, um, to have a, a consultant do, do a study so we can get some actual data and uh, make a case. Um, so that is yet to be um, uh, resolved, but that's in process now. So. Yeah, Richard. Uh, Richard. Yeah, I'm confused about the the size and the decision not to apply. Are are were they saying that we don't have enough homes that need deletting that we couldn't spend a million dollars in Northampton? Uh, so the requirements of the grant. Um, so. The grant can only pay for um, houses with children under six. Um, so it has to be, so right there, we've narrowed it down. Um, and then there's a production quota, and you have to be producing, um, basically within three months of startup, you need to be producing. And um, I, I'm at my work computer, I have all the numbers and basically, and then the the towns would have to put up 50% of the rehab costs. So the homeowner, they would get 20 grand, say the, the lead paint is 50 grand of work. The the grant would pay for 25, the either, either the homeowner or the city has to pay the other 50% or $25,000. So now we're funneling even more uh, the amount of people that would qualify. Um, so, you know, you're talking about a small town like maybe Huntington there in Hampshire County uh, are, you know, I don't know um, if they would, the town would have $25,000 to do, you know, if we did equal allotments of kind of- I'm not okay. talking about other towns. I was just wondering what yeah. the reason for not doing Northampton. I. I I certainly think that we have 40 or more homes that would need treatment um, yeah. given our housing stock. So, but I, if you've got to raise funds from multiple sources that presents obstacles and now I understand that there are obstacles. 
Yeah. Thank, thank you. Does somebody else have their hand up? Therese? Uh, what is a small area FMR? Yeah. Um, so right now, um, the section uh, section eight vouchers and um, the HUD income limits, those are calculated for Northampton out of the Springfield Metropolitan Statistical Area, the MSA. So the rents in Springfield are much lower on average than Northampton. So because of that, um, uh, we people you know, they use the housing voucher, um, the a limit uh, does not help them in Northampton uh, because it's based off of the value in Springfield. So the small area in FMR, fair market rent, excuse me, um, is a way that HUD allows for um, a city or a county to say, we want to set our own rates um, and it can go up to, I think, 110 or 120 percent of the area and um, the medium income in the area. Um, so that would potentially help more people use their voucher in Northampton. OK, thank you. Other thoughts? I would like to put on the agenda for next month. Um, Again, talking about planning a meeting in person for the housing partnership. So let's put that on May's agenda. So we have a couple things already for the agenda. We'll add stuff. Are there other thoughts, comments? No. All right. Well, thank you everybody for being here. Thank you for speaking up. That's so super important. Um, and now I'll entertain somebody speaking up to make a motion. I make a motion we adjourn. Second. Okay. Goodbye everybody. Triple. Bye. Bye. <laughs>